Okay, this is uh, Dr. Graves with a video tutorial that will probably take, I don't know, about 15 minutes to explain um, again or in slightly different terms uh, what we're going to do uh, for uh, field data collection on our trip to uh, View Park, Windsor Hills neighborhood. So the point uh, that we're trying to um, get at with this exercise is to examine the relationship between the orderliness of neighborhoods, the fear of crime, and the actual crime rates using something called uh, chi-square test. So what we're going to do is that we'll meet at this uh, park here at the top of uh, Windsor Hills and we will walk down one of these streets like Inadale streets and as we walk down it we will um, fill out a sheet of paper that looks like this. This is our data collection sheet and in the disorder scale column you will write down um, a value between 1 and 5 where 1 indicates a perfectly neat and orderly property that includes the yard, the driveway, the house, the windows, the roof, the trees, everything. Uh, those that are perfectly ordered get a sphere scale of, of one, and those that are uh, look like they've uh, really uh, lack any care and, and, and completely abandoned get a scale of five. And uh, you will do the same for each of these houses uh, on the fear scale. So those houses that have no fences, no bars on the windows, no uh, indication whatsoever that the, the resident fears crime will get a fear scale of one and those that have um, barbed wire fences and barking dogs and security cameras and all of that sort of thing uh, will get a scare, fear scale of five uh, under at least one theoretical framework that those scales ought to match but uh, my guess is that they don't often. And then I will present you with the actual crime rates for each of these neighborhoods and we will use a chi-square test to determine whether or not the observed values match the expected values. So does the the disorder predict the fear or does the disorder predict the crime rates or do fears predict the crime rate, so to speak. Uh, if they match perfectly, then we can say something about this broken windows theory. So after we've returned from class, it will be your job to take your sheet of paper that has your data collection and, can, and uh, transfer it over to this sheet here that you are able to uh, download from Moodle here, Sampling Disorder and Crime. One of the things that we have to make sure of, something that I didn't mention in class earlier, that we have to have the same number of observations for each of our neighborhoods in order for this to work uh, reasonably well. So I have 12 observations in each of the neighborhoods. I have to have a bare minimum of five um, in order for this to work reasonably well. But, um, you know, the more the better uh, in terms of neighborhoods. So uh, get as many as you can on each of these areas um, while still taking a systematic selection, meaning every third house or every fifth house. Uh, but you have to have at least... I would say 10 in each of the neighborhoods. Okay, so once you've uh, entered all your data and you have the same number of observations, the same count, same n, this has a count of 12, then highlight your entire data set. You can do that most easily by pressing Control and A at the same time. And then click on the Insert tab click on the Pivot Table tool. The Pivot Table dialog window will appear, and 
click OK. Now I've already made one for you, um, and you can look at it uh, to help give you some inspiration, but we will calculate it anew uh, for this video tutorial. The first thing you want to do is to choose location, just check yes, or you can click and drag this location word into the row box and then we want to um, click and drag the disorder scale down into the values box and then click and drag fear scale down into that box and click and drag property r crime rate and violent crime rate into the values box. Notice that the first two columns gave us a count and each of those should say 12 and that's exactly what we want that's really good and so then we want to uh, change that from a count to a sum so rather than telling us we have 12 observations we want a total sum I right clicked on the column header and I want to summarize the values by sum and to repeat that, right click, drop down menu, summarize the values by sum. Okay, so now we have our um, values ready to go and we only have to change them around a little bit here in order to begin calculating. I'm going to highlight this box, click and drag. I'm going to press Control C to copy these values down here. Click in cell A10 and then I'm going to paste as values. So just the numbers. And these are the numbers that I have hypothetically put in here. So we have uh, the grand total. I'm going to rename it sum and then I want to add an average column easy enough to get the average, type equals, type in average, place a left parenthesis, highlight the values that you want to average, and press enter. And then I'm going to copy that all the way over, and now I have averages for each one. Now we can begin calculating the formula or the chi-square. There are multiple ways of doing this. For those students that were in class, I showed you how to uh, calculate it manually using this formula where we could compare the observed disorder scale and it should match the fear scale. So that could be observed minus expected. There are different ways of doing this. Uh, but for this video tutorial, we will not do the manual calculations. This is easy enough to do if you just uh, follow step by step in the order of operations that you learned in high school math. We're going to do a shortcut on this. Okay, so First, we're going to have a, we're going to rename this observed disorder, and then I'm going to highlight these values, press Control X, and then just move them over one block, and so I can put in here expected disorder. So one way of calculating uh, observed minus expected is to say that all of these neighborhoods should be the same. One way of using the chi-square test. And if they're all the same, they should be average. And as we know, our average of observed disorder is 17. So I'll just put 17 in here each time. And now we will use the software's chi-square test to calculate 
how similar this column of data is to this column of data. Click here, click on formulas, click on more functions, click on statistical, and from the drop down menu select chi square test. Click once. The actual range is also the observed range, so I'm going to just highlight cells B11 to B14. That's the observed. Click in the expected range box here, and then highlight the expected range, the expected series of variables, and then click OK and I get a number of 0.4 and this is not chi-square but this is the chi-square probability probability which is essentially um, the chance that these two columns of data are the same are the blue and the red columns of data the same and this says, well, it's a 40% chance that they're same. Um, there's a 60% chance that they're different. And basically, that doesn't tell us a heck of a lot. It just suggests that, well, they're certainly not completely different, but you can't be with uh, certain that they are different, that this could be due to random chance or a sampling error or something else should be going on. If you copy that chi-square test one cell to the right and press enter and then press F2, you can then click on the bottom of this box. See, I've clicked on it and I can drag it over. And now we're asking the chi-square test to say, does our disorder scale, the disorderly of the neighbor, neighborhood, does it go hand in hand with the fear scale? So as the disorderliness goes up, does the fear of crime also go up in this neighborhood? And well, it I should rephrase that. Is the disorderliness scale match the the fear scale, and as it turns out, um, they don't match very well. The chances of these being the same has dropped from 40 down to almost um, basically nothing. Now, of course, you can see that they're, they're sort of different, and that makes sense. Now, it appears that in this bottom neighborhood, the disorderliness and the fear are similar, but on the hilltop, uh, the disorder is low and the fear is actually sim is, is high. So what this is telling us is that people are generally, uh, on average, far more fearful uh, despite the fact that they're orderly. If we copy this over further and we say does the... Uh, fear scale, so I'm going to drag this over, does the fear scale match the property crime rate? We're going to get an absurdly small number. This is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 120, uh, and that's uh, an ably, you know, a ridiculously small chance that those two are the same. And the reason is because our property crime rate is on a scale that's radically different than our 1 through 5 Likert scale. So what we need to do is to modify our property crime rate scale so it matches or at least um, generally follows the sum of fear scale, uh, the 1 through 5 scale that we use to create this. So in order to put the property crime rate on a, a 1 through 5 scale so that they're matching, uh, what I'm going to do is just move these two over these two columns over, and in fact I'm going to move this one over an extra so I have a space to work with, and I'm going to call this scaled property crime rate. 
And basically, what I want to do is to make um, the values in this column average 26 like they do in this column. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to divide 180, or no, I'm going to divide 742, which is the sum of the property crime rates, by 105, which is the sum of the fear scale, and I'll get 7.066. Then I'm going to divide the property crime rate at 116 for the hilltop by 7.0667. I'm going to press the key F4 to freeze that reference because what I want to do is divide each of the property crime rates by 7.066667. Copy and paste. To check our work, I'm going to copy this, 26.5, which is the average. Remember, that's the average for that column. I'm going to paste it over here, and I get 26.25. So now I have a scaled property crime rate that I compare to the fear uh, scale. Now I'm going to just drag this red box back over here, and now I'm comparing these values, the actual property crime rate, against the fear of crime scale, uh, scale uh, values that we collected in the field. Press enter, and it's still very small, kind of hard to see if you don't like scientific notation. Click on the Home tab, click on the drop-down menu about number format, and just change it to numbers, and then we can increase the decimal up to a very high number, and we can see that the fear of crime rate actually doesn't match the property crime rate very well at all. It will be interesting to see if the, the fear of crime rate or the disorder rate, we can we could compare those two as well, uh, if they match the crime rate. What about the violent crime rate? Well, I'm going to do a shortcut on that and see if you you see if you can replicate that. That way you'll know you're doing it correctly. So how would we do that? Let's move that over here. So this value here is the probability now that the property crime rate scaled matches this the fear uh, scale, and we see that that is pretty small, but actually that the fear scale is more closely related to the scaled uh, violent crime rate here. Scaled violent crime rate. So hopefully you got a number that's similar to that. And um, if you didn't, you can come and see me. Um, but I want you to do a little bit of this on your own. So your numbers should be different when you uh, enter all of these um, on your ex in your sheet over here. Um, but um, it will be interesting to see what you come up with. You will write a paragraph here explaining the values that you've gotten and uh, whether or not you think that disorder and fear and actual violent crime rate uh, match. Um, they may or may not. I have no idea what you're going to find, but that is your task. Uh, that concludes this uh, video tutorial and uh, good luck. Um, send me this file with a paragraph uh, via email.